I'm an instructor of music and entertainment industry studies. And today, I'd like to give you an inside look at our entertainment industry studies recording studios here on the Moorhead campus. Let's go. My heart is with the students. We are such a tight-knit group here in Business Office Technology. We just get to know them personally. We get to know them as far as what they want to do with their future to help guide and direct and um, be a part of them. Our students that go the accounting direction will take the same basic core classes that all BOT students take. They also begin to pick up advanced business accounting that the other majors do not. They take payroll accounting, they take income tax accounting, QuickBooks. They all will be able to go and be um, like a payroll clerk, an accounts payable receivable clerk. Some of our students want to go on to the university level and they can, and they're prepared to go on and get a, a maybe possibly a bachelor's degree in accounting or even get their CPA. Previous to this, I was actually a math major, but I have my own small business. So I like to use those experiences and share those with my students to hopefully inspire them. So in administrative office, you cover all of the Microsoft Office programs. You'll take Microsoft Word 1 and 2, you'll take Excel 1 and 2, and you'll take Microsoft Access. Also, you take business communications, so you learn how to communicate effectively in the business world, and that's so important. One really great benefit to our students is they get to do an externship. So they actually get to go out and shadow and work for a business. So they get those hands-on experiences. They can start off in any entry-level position as far as a payroll clerk goes, an administrative assistant, even possibly a manager of a business. When I came up, you know, everybody said, go to a four-year college, blah, blah, blah. Really and truly, if I had it to do over again, I would come to a community college and learn a skill. Because skilled labor right now, these guys are the future. They're gonna be the ones making the money. We do offer a certificate program, a technical certificate program, and an associate's degree out of this program. So there's three career paths that they could take. A one-year, two-year, or take some academics and do an associate's degree. 
We do an apprentice program and an on-the-job training program through Win Job Center with several of our dealers in our area. And I've got dealerships and private guys just beating the door down needing technicians. So this skill right here is something they can carry on through life, they can make a living at. If you know what you're doing, you can make six figures. No problem. That's a lot of money. I've been on heavy equipment my entire life. Yeah, I was nine years old and my dad told me to dig a ditch about a mile long and left me there for a week and I did it. It's a lot of different pieces of equipment it takes to get the job done. We have backhoes, kid steers, track loaders, bulldozers, motor graders, dump trucks. You need to know all of them and be a master at one or two of them. That way you can fluctuate throughout a construction job site. Construction equipment, it's everywhere. My long-term goal has always been to teach. I had a professor when I was in culinary school that was kind of one of these life-changing guys. Spent a lot of time and effort with me. Uh, and my long-term goal was always to give back, to be able to share my knowledge of food uh, with a younger generation. In the culinary world, our end game is very simple. We're trying to entertain you and we're trying to fulfill you. Whether it's through the sight of the food, the smell of the food, or the taste of the food, you have to have all three of those aspects together to make a really, really good dish. There's one thing their freshman year that I just beat to death, and it's the six keys to becoming a professional chef. Knowledge, skill, taste, judgment, dedication, and pride. And if a student has those six things and follows through with them, they will be wildly successful. Having a dream and following through with that dream is probably one of the most rewarding things that I can have. We are broad in our area of what we teach. A student can come through and they can go in the mechanical design aspect of it. They can go into the architectural. They can go into the civil and surveying, estimating. I would say this is probably the sixth or fifth year that we've been heavy into the 3D printing. It is a valuable tool and it's the wave of the future. You don't have to have an art background. You don't have to have an engineering background. You want to pursue a four-year degree we've got different avenues for that also so my spare time i'm still drawing at home uh, designing residential homes and commercial buildings i love what i do and when i can teach a student to do and love what i do it makes my day It's wide open with electrical technology. We start with basic residential wiring. Uh, we start talking about how ACDC works together. And then we go into motor control for our second semester. Then after the first year, we go into pneumatics and hydraulics. Fourth semester, we go into AutoCAD. We go into PLC, programmable logic control. So anything to do with electrical, we basically cover that. Their career options are unlimited, so you could be just a regular handyman doing residential, putting ceiling fans up, remodels for kitchens, can lights, receptacles, hanging wall-mounted TVs. You could go work with a grain bin system. You could work for a farmer, a grain elevator. Cellular South picks our guys up because they need technicians for the towers. They can make 50, 60 grand starting out. 
So I have students that are hired before they get out of school. Our program deals more with the agronomy side of agriculture and how to grow crops. Also with the agribusiness side, we talk about yield monitors on combines and cotton pickers. We talk about uh, guidance on tractors. We talk about variable rate technologies. Talking a little bit about remote sensing and how we're using the drones out on the farm. We get into dealing with a little bit on livestock. We cover so many weeks for each crop that we grow around here and I also teach a farm machinery and shop management class. With the technological background we've got now in agriculture, there are some good paying jobs out there waiting, and right now we've got more people calling in with jobs than we've got graduates to fill them. It's very special to me that you can take a seed and plant it in the ground and you can see a plant grow and you can see something to harvest from it. MDCC has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. It's the place your journey begins. Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big, plan well, and be anything. Love the field of study, love refrigeration. It's what I've done basically since I got out of high school. I came right into this same program in this same shop. Well, with HVAC, there's so many different avenues you can take between refrigeration, ice machines, commercial refrigeration, uh, residential heating and air conditioning, commercial heating and air conditioning, and so on and so forth. There's endless opportunities for these guys. Our goal is to have these sophomores placed at a job where after spring break, they don't come back. They're on the job learning and providing for their family. There's nothing better to have a student come back after five or six years to give you their success story. How they went from where they were to where they are now, and I was a part of that. I am a graduate of Mississippi Delta. I stayed here four years. I took HVAC and I took industrial electricity slash industrial maintenance. I don't get stuck in a rut. That's why I chose industrial maintenance, heating and air, for the simple reason I I'm not stuck in a building all day. I might be wiring up lights at a customer's house today. I might be working on a well motor tomorrow. Then they might want to go to a factory. Then they might want to go work for a welding company. A student will be able to decide what way he wants to go. If they're serious, they can get a job anywhere. Well, I tell them if they have a willingness to learn, I can show them how to get out and get a good job, and they can make all the money they want to. You know, they get top pay when they graduate. For two years, you can make anywhere from $18, $24 an hour, somewhere in that range. I really like when I see a student learn something. That's very rewarding.
precision agriculture essentially is applying crop production inputs on a site-specific basis to reduce waste, increase profit, and maintain the quality of the environment. It's uh, everything from working on the computer and geographic information systems, how we look at imagery, do prescription maps, to trapping beavers, to, to learning about wild hog control and what the best methods are for that. It's a two-year program, so you can get an associate's degree or you can do it in essentially a year and a half if you want to just get the certificate in precision agriculture if you would like to continue on to a university with a four-year degree, there's a great articulation that we have now with Mississippi State University and also Alcorn. What I enjoy about teaching is taking a student who has never been around welding before, and by the time we're through with them, they're able to go out and get a job and make a living and provide for themselves and their families. Job prospects look good. If you want to get out there and work, the jobs are there. Your range in which you can go basically depends on your work ethic. My class size started as 12 people, two of which are already at work. They've been working for two weeks now. They don't even come to class. They come and take their exam at the end of the year, and they've been getting a paycheck. You can make all the money that you're willing to go out and make. The sky's the limit. MDCC has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. It's the place your journey begins. Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big, plan well, and be anything. My name is Ben Folk. I'm an instructor of music and entertainment industry studies. And today, I'd like to give you an inside look at our entertainment industry studies recording studios here on the Moorhead campus. Let's go.
My heart is with the students. We are such a tight-knit group here in Business Office Technology. We just get to know them personally. We get to know them as far as what they want to do with their future to help guide and direct and um, be a part of them. Our students that go the accounting direction will take the same basic core classes that all BOT students take. They also begin to pick up advanced business accounting that the other majors do not. They take payroll accounting, they take income tax accounting, QuickBooks. They all will be able to go and be um, like a payroll clerk, an accounts payable receivable clerk. Some of our students want to go on to the university level and they can, and they're prepared to go on and get a, a possibly a bachelor's degree in accounting or even get their CPA. Previous to this, I was actually a math major, but I have my own small business. So I like to use those experiences and share those with my students to hopefully inspire them. So in administrative office, you cover all of the Microsoft Office programs. You'll take Microsoft Word 1 and 2, you'll take Excel 1 and 2, and you'll take Microsoft Access. Also, you take business communications, so you learn how to communicate effectively in the business world, and that's so important. One really great benefit to our students is they get to do an externship. So they actually get to go out and shadow and work for a business. So they get those hands-on experiences. They can start off in any entry-level position as far as a payroll clerk goes, an administrative assistant, even possibly a manager of a business. When I came up, you know, everybody said, go to a four-year college, blah, blah, blah. Really and truly, if I had it to do over again, I would come to a community college and learn a skill. Because skilled labor right now, these guys are the future. They're going to be the ones making the money. We do offer a certificate program, a technical certificate program, and an associate's degree out of this program. So there's three career paths that they could take. A one-year, two-year, or take some academics and do an associate's degree. We do an apprentice program and an on-the-job training program through Wynn Job Center with several of our dealers in our area. And I've got dealerships and private guys just beating the door down needing technicians. So this skill right here is something they can carry on through life, they can make a living at. If you know what you're doing, you can make six figures. No problem. That's a lot of money. I've been on heavy equipment my entire life. Yeah, I was nine years old and my dad told me to dig a ditch about a mile long and left me there for a week and I did it. It's a lot of different pieces of equipment it takes to get the job done. We have backhoes, kid steers, track loaders, bulldozers, motor graders, dump trucks. You need to know all of them and be a master at one or two of them. That way you can fluctuate throughout a construction job site. Construction equipment, it's everywhere.
my long-term goal has always been to teach. I had a professor when I was in culinary school that was kind of one of these life-changing guys. Spent a lot of time and effort with me. Uh, and my long-term goal was always to give back, to be able to share my knowledge of food uh, with a younger generation. In the culinary world, our end game is very simple. We're trying to entertain you and we're trying to fulfill you. Whether it's through the sight of the food, the smell of the food, or the taste of the food, you have to have all three of those aspects together to make a really, really good dish. There's one thing their freshman year that I just beat to death, and it's the six keys to becoming a professional chef. Knowledge, skill, taste, judgment, dedication, and pride. And if a student has those six things and follows through with them, they will be wildly successful. Having a dream and following through with that dream is probably one of the most rewarding things that I can have. We are broad in our area what we teach. A student can come through and they can go in the mechanical design aspect of it. They can go into the architectural. They can go into the civil and surveying, estimating. I would say this is probably the sixth or fifth year that we've been heavy into the 3D printing. It is a valuable tool and it's the wave of the future. You don't have to have an art background. You don't have to have an engineering background. You want to pursue a four-year degree? We've got different avenues for that also. So my spare time, I'm still drawing at home, uh, designing residential homes and commercial buildings. I love what I do. And when I can teach a student to do and love what I do, it makes my day. It's wide open with electrical technology. We start with basic residential wiring. Uh, we start talking about how ACDC works together. And then we go into motor control for our second semester. Then after the first year, we go into pneumatics and hydraulics. Fourth semester, we go into AutoCAD. We go into PLC, Programmable Logic Control. So anything to do with electrical, we basically cover that. Their career options are unlimited, so you could be just a regular handyman doing residential, putting ceiling fans up, remodels for kitchens, can lights, receptacles, hanging wall-mounted TVs. You could go work with a grain bin system. You could work for a farmer, a grain elevator. Cellular South picks our guys up because they need technicians for the towers. They can make 50, 60 grand starting out. I have students who are hired before they get out of school. Our program deals more with the agronomy side of agriculture and how to grow crops. Also with the agribusiness side, we talk about yield monitors on combines and cotton pickers. We talk about uh, guidance on tractors. We talk about variable rate technologies. We talk a little bit about remote sensing and how we're using the drones out on the farm. We get into dealing with a little bit on livestock. We cover so many weeks for each crop that we grow around here. And I also teach a farm machinery and shop management class. With the technological background we've got now in agriculture, there are some good paying jobs out there waiting. And right now, we've got more people calling in with jobs than we've got graduates to fill them. It's very special to me that you can take a seed and plant it in the ground, and you can see a plant grow, and you can see something to harvest from it.
Casey has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. It's the place your journey begins. Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big, plan well, and be anything. Love the field of study, love refrigeration. It's what I've done basically since I got out of high school. I came right into this same program in this same shop. Well, with HVAC, there's so many different avenues you can take between refrigeration, ice machines, commercial refrigeration, uh, residential heating and air conditioning, commercial heating and air conditioning, and so on and so forth. There's endless opportunities for these guys. Our goal is to have these sophomores placed at a job where after spring break, they don't come back. They're on the job learning and providing for their family. There's nothing better to have a student come back after five or six years to give you their success story. How they went from where they were to where they are now, and I was a part of that. I am a graduate of Mississippi Delta. I stayed here four years, I took HVAC, and I took industrial electricity slash industrial maintenance. I don't get stuck in a rut. That's why I chose industrial maintenance, heating in there, for the simple reason I'm not stuck in a building all day. I might be wiring up lights at a customer's house today, I might be working on a well motor tomorrow, then they might want to go to a factory, then they might want to go work for a welding company. A student will be able to decide what way he wants to go. If they're serious, they can get a job anywhere. Well, I tell them if they have a willingness to learn, I can show them how to get out and get a good job, and they can make all the money they want to. You know, they get top pay when they graduate. For two years, you can make anywhere from $18, $24 an hour, somewhere in that range. I really like when I see a student learn something. That's very rewarding. Precision agriculture essentially is applying crop production inputs on a site-specific basis to reduce waste, increase profit, and maintain the quality of the environment. It's uh, everything from working on the computer and geographic information systems, how we look at imagery, do prescription maps, to trapping beavers, to, to learning about wild hog control and what the best methods are for that. It's a two-year program, so you can get an associate's degree or you can do it in essentially a year and a half if you want to just get the certificate in precision agriculture. And if you would like to continue on to a university with a four-year degree, there's a great articulation that we have now at Mississippi State University and also Alcorn. What I enjoy about teaching is taking a student who has never been around welding before, and by the time we're through with them, they're able to go out and get a job and make a living and provide for themselves and their families. Job prospects look good. If you want to get out there and work, the jobs are there. Your range in which you can go basically depends on your work ethic. My class size started as 12 people, two of which are already at work. They've been working for two weeks now. They don't even come to class. They come and take their exam at the end of the year, and they've been getting a paycheck. 
you can make all the money that you're willing to go out and make. The sky's the limit. MDCC has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. It's the place your journey begins. Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big, plan well, and be anything. My name is Ben Folk. I'm an instructor of music and entertainment industry studies. And today, I'd like to give you an inside look at our entertainment industry studies recording studios here on the Moorhead campus. Let's go. My heart is with the students. We are such a tight-knit group here in Business Office Technology. We just get to know them personally. We get to know them as far as what they want to do with their future to help guide and direct and um, be a part of them. Our students that go the accounting direction will take the same basic core classes that all BOT students take. They also begin to pick up advanced business accounting that the other majors do not. They take payroll accounting, they take income tax accounting, QuickBooks. They all will be able to go and be um, like a payroll clerk, an accounts payable receivable clerk, 
some of our students want to go on to the university level and they can, and they're prepared to go on and get a, a possibly a bachelor's degree in accounting or even get their CPA. Previous to this, I was actually a math major, but I have my own small business. So I like to use those experiences and share those with my students to hopefully inspire them. So in administrative office, you cover all of the Microsoft Office programs. You'll take Microsoft Word 1 and 2, you'll take Excel 1 and 2, and you'll take Microsoft Access. Also, you take business communications, so you learn how to communicate effectively in the business world, and that's so important. One really great benefit to our students is they get to do an externship. So they actually get to go out and shadow and work for a business. So they get those hands-on experiences. They can start off in any entry-level position as far as a payroll clerk goes, an administrative assistant, even possibly a manager of a business. When I came up, you know, everybody said, go to a four-year college, blah, blah, blah. Really and truly, if I had it to do over again, I would come to a community college and learn a skill. Because skilled labor right now, these guys are the future. They're going to be the ones making the money. We do offer a certificate program, a technical certificate program, and an associate's degree out of this program. So there's three career paths that they could take. A one-year, two-year, or take some academics and do an associate's degree. We do an apprentice program and an on-the-job training program through Wynn Job Center with several of our dealers in our area. And I've got dealerships and private guys just beating the door down needing technicians. So this skill right here is something they can carry on through life, they can make a living at. If you know what you're doing, you can make six figures, no problem. That's a lot of money. I've been on heavy equipment my entire life. Yeah, I was nine years old and my dad told me to dig a ditch about a mile long and left me there for a week and I did it. It's a lot of different pieces of equipment it takes to get the job done. We have backhoes, skid steers, track loaders, bulldozers, motor graders, dump trucks. You need to know all of them and be a master at one or two of them. That way you can fluctuate throughout a construction job site. Construction equipment, it's everywhere. My long-term goal has always been to teach. I had a professor when I was in culinary school that was kind of one of these life-changing guys. Spent a lot of time and effort with me. Uh, my long-term goal was always to give back, to be able to share my knowledge of food uh, with a younger generation. In the culinary world, our end game is very simple. We're trying to 
entertain you and we're trying to fulfill you. Whether it's through the sight of the food, the smell of the food, or the taste of the food, you have to have all three of those aspects together to make a really, really good dish. There's one thing their freshman year that I just beat to death, and it's the six keys to becoming a professional chef. Knowledge, skill, taste, judgment, dedication, and pride. And if a student has those six things and follows through with them, they will be wildly successful. Having a dream and following through with that dream is probably one of the most rewarding things that I can have. We are broad in our area of what we teach. A student can come through and they can go in the mechanical design aspect of it. They can go into the architectural. They can go into the civil and surveying, estimating. I would say this is probably the sixth or fifth year that we've been heavy into the 3D printing. It is a valuable tool and it's the wave of the future. You don't have to have an art background. <laughs> Facing off against the Southwest Mississippi Community College Bears. The Southwest Bears led by Coach Clifton Collins look to extend their win streak and play hard. Coach Collins said we prepared and had a great fall preseason count. The guys are just ready to get on the road and hit someone. Nice return. And your MBCC Trojan will be led by head coach Tavares Johnson as he looks to help the Trojan bounce back from last year's 50 to zero loss and potentially end a three-game losing streak versus Bears. The 2023 Trojans would feature Copaya Lincoln, Community College transfer quarterback under center, a six foot three, 180 pound sophomore. And tonight will be a good game. We have MBCC on offense first, led by the transfer quarterback from Copaya Lincoln. First down. First play of the game would be a run, but he would be stopped almost immediately by number 38 with Tavius Herbert, the 5'9", 210-pound sophomore from Macomb, Mississippi. Second and about 12. Nice pass to the outside, which will result in another loss. Nice defense early on by your Southwest Bears. Nice defense early on. Let's see how can the Trojans bounce back on their first third down of the night. Penalty on the play. Which will result in positive yards for the Trojans. Second. Offsides on the defense. So there will now be third and nine from about nine yards. Pass nearly intercepted by number 14, Tyrese Martin, the 5'10", 180 pound defensive back from Louisiana. And we'll have our first punter tonight by the Trojans. Punter who will be returning for tonight. We have Tyler Danes. Bad snap, and another 
and another stop. Play maybe called too early, but it will result in a turnover by the Trojans. The Bears take offense for the first time tonight. Let's see if the Trojans can hold up in the goal line. And your Southwest Bears will be led by quarterback number five, Jordan Mills, the 6'5 red shirt freshman from Hot Springs, Arkansas. First play of the game, nearly a touchdown by the Bears, but it looks like he would be a, a yard short. Maybe two, so about second and about two yards. Touchdown on the play. Number one, Jalen Williams, the running back from Mankin, Louisiana. His first collegiate touchdown. The Southwest Bears lead early. 13 minutes remaining in this first quarter. Extra point good by Lyndon Boatman, the freshman kicker from Eupora. Quick, quick score for the Southwest Bears. Bears kicking again, and we have number one, Sir Trotter, and number 22, Keelan Martin Brown. Nice kick. Turner out of bounds at about the 26 yard line. And your Trojans will take offense again. Let's see if the Trojans can bounce back from their first position, which resulted in a three and out, which ultimately led to a turnover. First to 10 on the 25 for your Trojans. Another loss on the play. Nice defense tonight here early on by the Bears. As I don't think they've allowed a yard tonight besides return. in about 10. Nice screen. Drop pass on the play. Third and 10. 12 minutes, 45 seconds left. First quarter. Still early. Third and 10. Nice, nice completion. Nice completion. This resulted in a first, first down of the night by the Trojans. Would this be the momentum that the Trojans need? Nice pickup on the play by number eight, 
Emory James, the sophomore from Louisville, Miss Louisville, Mississippi. There's a penalty on the play. Big penalty. Led to the first down being taken away. We're replayed it down. So it's third and about eight yards. Third down. Nice defense early on by the Bears. But they had two shutouts early on. Two early shutouts by the Bears. The Trojans kind of slow right now. Looking to pick that up. This time we'll have to kill Allen returning. No correction. Daniel Hall for a catch on the play. Last position for the Bears resulted in a touchdown. Let's see how the Bears re respond this time. First and 10, 35 yard line. First down, first plate, no. Fumble, first play, first down, fumble. The Trojans feel they have a little momentum. Will this result in a score for the Trojans? Trojans looking at bounce back if they have nice field position to start this drive nice pass nice pass but an even great even better catch by number 82 it can be Willis Nice catch. Trojans might have a little momentum. First down run to the outside. Nice tackle on the play as the running back tried to jump. By number 14, Swahili Erie. Nice tackle by the Bears, the Trojans. Second and about six. Touchdown, Trojans. No good, no. Maybe not, maybe not. It appears to be a nice catch on the play by number one, Sir Trotter. Third and about seven for the Trojans. How would they bounce back? Eleven minutes remaining in this first quarter. 
drop back. And a nice pass. And a nice pass once again to number 82, the Camby Willis. As he's been a star of this drive so far. Pendley on the play. See what the Rivs have. Yeah. 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 All sides on the defense. We'll repeat their first down play, first and five. Seems the Trojans have the momentum they need. Bell will be the first time out of the half by your Southwest Bears. And we'll be right back here at MDCC Sports Network in a second. Engineering background. You want to pursue a four-year degree? We've got different avenues for that also. So my spare time, I'm still drawing at home, uh, designing residential homes and commercial buildings. I love what I do. And when I can teach a student to do and love what I do, it makes my day. It's wide open with electrical technology. We start with basic residential wiring. Uh, we start talking about how ACDC works together. And then we go into motor control for our second semester. Then after the first year, we go into pneumatics and hydraulics. And we're back at MDCC Sports Network. And the Trojans are about 10 yards away from a touchdown. Nice drop back by the quarterback. See escape. Nice hit, nice hit by number 29, Javier Simmons. The six feet, 185 pound sophomore from Gulfport. Which resulted in a loss on the play. So second and about 11. Pass to the outside, but he was brought down almost immediately by number nine, Dante Thomas, the sophomore out of Hammond, Louisiana. Third and 11. Nice drop back, but he was brought down by a number of bears. Number 55, James Kate the third, and number 58, Corbett Sims. Mims, correct me. Your bears play excellent defense on this drive. See if the Trojans can get on a on a scoreboard for the first time tonight. And this will be about a, a 41 yard field goal attempt. Up, but no good. The Bears with retained position. Seven zero. Southwest leading with eight minutes forty six seconds left in this first quarter.
First play of this drive by the Bears will be a run. And he'll be brought, brought down by a gang of Trojans. Number 45, Jacoby Franklin. Number 48, Jonathan Nicholson. Second and eight. Nice drop back and pass. Nice catch and run by number one, Jalen Williams. We would like to hear his name a lot tonight. As we have early on, and they go back to him. First down by the Bears. If they hear you, if they're offense. First and 10 from about 37. Nice pass. Even better catch and even better play by number 1 second. I think that was number 17. Another run. Nice defense by the Trojans. Second and about 10. Another pass. In a bomb, but incomplete pass. And 10 for number 10, Ty Moore. The 6 2 2 10 sophomore out of Lorena, Texas. So that'll be third and 10. Nice pass and catch. Nice catch by number eight, Keegan Rogers. As he was brought down by a number of Trojans. And it appears that the Bears will be going for it on this fourth down. Another pass. And a great catch. An incomplete catch. And this will be the first First turnover of the night by the Bears. The Trojan still looking to get on the board for the first time tonight. Would we'll take position with six minutes and nine seconds left in this first quarter. Nice run, but he will be stopped short at, around the line. That was number eight, Emory James. It appears number five, Troy Griffin, is in the game tonight. The freshman out of Indianola, Mississippi. Second and 10 by the Trojans. And he looks to escape the pocket and run. Nice run. Nice run by the freshman quarterback out of Indianola, Mississippi, Troy Griffin. But there was, there will be a penalty marker. Let's see if this play will come back. Nice pickup, Troy Griffin. 
Illegal blind side block. This real result in a replay of the down. Trojan still looking to march downfield to potentially get on the board for the first time tonight. Second and 13. Most likely another run by number five, Troy Griffin. This might be a person everyone needs to watch tonight. Fresh matter, Andy Nola. The call went back. And he said, I'm going to take it back. First down. The result in a loss of about two for the Trojans. Second and 12. Four minutes remaining in this quarter. Drive back for a pass. Nice pass and completion to number seven. Jaquiel Allen, the sophomore out of Rootville, Mississippi. about four yards in the period there was a quarterback sneak. Fourth down for the Trojans. It appears that the offense is still on the field. Fourth down in about four yards. No, three yards, correction. Time out on the play. Uh, yes, the NBCC, their first time out. And with that time out, we'll be right back with NBCC Sports Network. Fourth semester, we go into AutoCAD. We go into PLC, Programmable Logic Control. Anything to do with electrical, we basically cover that. Their career options are unlimited, so you could be just a regular handyman doing residential, putting ceiling fans up, remodels for kitchens, can lights, receptacles, hanging wall mounted TVs. You could go work with a grain bin system, you could work for a farmer, a grain elevator. Cellular South picks our guys up because they need technicians for the towers. They can make 50, 60 grand starting out. I have students who are hired before they get out of school. Our program deals more with the agronomy side of agriculture and how to grow crops, also with the agribusiness.
nice punt. The Trojans would likely start their position at the 10 yard line, at their own 10 yard line. First and 10 for the Trojans, 26 seconds left in this first quarter of action. 7-6 lead by Southwest Bears. Time out on the play by your Trojans. That's their second and half. That they likely seen something that they didn't like. And that would take us into another MDCC Sports Network break, and we'll be right back. We've talked about yield monitors on combines and cotton pickers. We talked about uh, guidance on tractors. We talked about variable rate technologies. Talking a little bit about remote sensing and how we're using the drones out on the farm. We get into dealing with a little bit on livestock. We cover so many weeks for each crop that we grow around here. And I also teach a farm machinery and shop management class. With the technological background we've got now in agriculture, there are some good paying jobs out there waiting. And right now we've got more people calling in with jobs than we've got graduates to fill them. It's very special to me that you can take a seed and plant it in the ground and you can see a plant grow and you can see something to harvest from it. We're back in action. First down, nice run by number 13, but there was an even better tackle by number 13 on the other side. Jeffrey Polk Jr., the linebacker out of Pickens. And that will lead us into the end of the first quarter. And we will be right back with NBCC Sports Network. MDCC has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. It's the place your journey begins. Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big, plan well, and be anything. And we're back at NBCC Sports Network as the Trojans look to march downfield as they're on their own side of the field. Second and about two. Correction, second and one. Nice, nice throw. Nice spin. Nice play by the Trojans with almost. We're just going to keep it at almost. Nice play by the Trojans. And Dick Kitch was by number one, no other than Sir Trotter once again, because he's had a nice night so far for the Trojans. Oh, 
runs. But short pickup by the Trojans. Number eight, Emory James on the run. Second and nine. Second and nine for your Trojans. This play will be a pass. Nice, nice pass, nice catch. A nice way to stay strong. Better. Running back number eight, Emory James. Third and about six for the Trojans. Bears looking a little anxious right now. Nice drop back by the quarterback number five. And that will result in an out of bounds pass at Troy Griffin. And it appears that the Trojans will stay on offense to try to convert the fourth down. No, here comes the punt team. Here comes the punt team. Fourth and six. And there will be a timeout called apparently. Timeout by the Bears. And if there's 12 minutes and 43 seconds remaining in this half of football, I would like to say there's been nice defense on both sides of the ball. Nice defense. Very nice defense. 12 minutes, 43 seconds. 7 to 6 ball game. Fourth and about 6. Let's see how will this punt be played. We still have number 17, Tyler Danes, still returning for the Bears. Nice punt by the Trojans, which will result in the Bears having about 94 yards to score. Bears looking to march downfield. Led by quarterback Jordan Mills. First play will be run. Shut down almost immediately by number 45, Jacoby Franklin. The 6'3 sophomore out of Bills only, Mississippi. Second and 11 for the Bears. Drop back and a near interception by number nine, Jordan Johnson. It almost appeared as number two, Jeremiah Ratliff, 
didn't see the ball coming. We have third and 11. Drop back, nice pass, nice catch, but he will be stopped. After about a two yard gain, the result in a fourth down, which will have the Bears kicking out of the end zone. And back to return for the Trojans, we have Daniel Hall once again. to be excellent star in field position by the Trojans. But they had a nice punt. But he muffed the punt and the Bears will take position at about the 50 yard line. Correction, 45 yard line. about this from his coaches. But he shouldn't hold his head down as the Trojans have played nice defense tonight. Bears back on offense. Nice laser. Which will result in an incompletion. And nice defense on the play. By number 15, Colin Williams. Second and 10, pass to number three on the outside, which will result in a decent game. Gain of about five or six. Third and five. As the Bears look to convert here and stay on offense. Drop back and pass. Nice catch, but he will be brought down. Quick, fast, and in a hurry by number 25, Kendrick Boyd. The Bears will be punting again. And number 17 will be returning again. He likely has a chip on his shoulder. Let's see off the last one. Let me slow down. There's a substitution. Let me slow down again. They have two returners this time. Number one, Sir Trotter, and number 17, Daniel Hall. Nice punt. Which will result in the first and 10. From about the 13 yard line, the Trojan will take position. Both teams slow so far this quarter to see if the Trojans can get on the scoreboard once again if they still trail by one. First and 10 by the Trojans. Rush, but he'll be brought down. 
by a number of Bears. Second and ten for the Trojans. Run by number five through the middle. Brought down by number 93. Jalen Price. Darryl was third and five. See if the Trojans can convert. Nice pass to the outside. He'll be brought down by a number of Bears, number zero, number 21, Ethan Williams and Jaden Clements. And your Trojans will be playing again. And it, will be, and it will be returned by number 17, Tyler Danes. Nearly blocked. Nice catch by the Bears as they take position with nice field position. Both teams still looking to put some points on the board this quarter. Bears take position at the 48-yard line. First, first down run by number eight. He brought down by a number of Trojans. Lead by number 46. Malik Sims. Nice drive back. Pass to the outside, incomplete. Third and eight for the Bears. If they started off fast, they have been slow. Let's see if the Bears can pick it up. As the Trojans have picked up their defense. Try back another pass. And catch in a spin, in a spin. Nice throw and catch. Nice catch by number two, Jeremiah Radliff, the sophomore out of Macomb. Keegan Rogers brought down by. Number of Trojans. Second and about seven now for the Bears. As they march closer to the end zone. Drive back and another pass. And a touchdown. That was a dart to the outside by number five, Jordan Mills. And a touchdown by number 11, DeMarco Blanton. The Bears strike once again as they lead right now 13-6 as they look to convert the extra point. Extra point good. Southwest leads 14 to 6 over the Trojans with six minutes and 12 seconds remaining in this half. 
Let's see how the Trojans can bounce back. We have returning for the Trojans this time. Number one, Sir Trotter. And number 23, Charles Mallard. Nice kitsch. Brought down. Almost on the first contact as the Trojans take offense once again. I think there's a timeout on the field. No, there's not a timeout. They have to reset the game clock. Let's see if the Bears can get a stop in. Keep their momentum going. Or will the Trojans get on the board once again with this position as they trail 14 to 6. First and 10. First play would be a run by the quarterback. And he'll be brought down by number four, Jameer Lewis. Second and 10. See if the Trojans can get something going. Pass. It's called by number eight, but, but brought down by number 14, Swahili Irby. by the Bears and the Trojans. Well, the uh, third and nine. Drive back in the pass and a nice hit by number zero. Ethan Williams, as I've called his name a couple times tonight, as he's covering his side of the field well. There will result in a punt by the Trojans. Nice defense on their position by the Bears, as they look to keep their momentum going and extend their lead. Position from about their 38 yard line. Let's see if they can extend this eight point lead. Nice effort by the punter to still get the punt off.
quarterback run by number five, and he's still running. That would be a gain of about 20 on the play by number five, Jordan Mills. And the Bears still have their momentum. They're in a run. Nice run. The Bears look to keep it on the ground so far. This position. And that results in another first down. Fumble by a quarterback as he completed the pass number 17, who was brought down. At the line. He was brought down at the line. Second and about nine. Lost a five by the Bears. Drop back and a pass across the middle. Nice catch, but a nice hit by number 25, Kendrick Boyd. Back in the pass across the middle. Called by number 11. The Marco Blanton, as we've heard his name a lot tonight for the Bears. First down, which resulted in a touchdown back to number 11, the Marco Blanton. And the Bears extend their lead to two positions. 14 point lead by the Bears. See if they can make this extra point. <laughs> extra point good by the Bears as they have a two position lead with two minutes remaining in this half of football. Let's see if the Trojans can answer. Ball game, two minutes. Let's see if the Trojans can answer within this two minutes. And put the game to one position. Nice point. And a nice catch and a nice run so far by number 11. Nice tackle by number 25 on the Bears. Amari and Jefferson. Nice return on the play by number 11. Jaquan Fry to give the Trojans decent field position to try to score before the half is over. Drop 
drop back pass. It would be incomplete. Intended for number one, Sir Trotter. Sides. They will likely result in a five yard gain for the Trojans. Second and five for the Trojans. Nice drop back. Nice pass. But an even better catch by number 17, Daniel Hall. Control is still looking to cut this ball down to one position with one minute and 29 seconds remaining. And with that timeout, we'll be right back with NDCC Sports Network. Love the field of study, love refrigeration. It's what I've done basically since I got out of high school. I came right into this same program and this same shop. Well, with HVAC, there's so many different avenues you can take between refrigeration, ice machines, commercial refrigeration, uh, residential heating and air conditioning, commercial heating and air conditioning, and so on and so forth. There's endless opportunities for these guys. Our goal is to have these sophomores placed at a job where after spring break, they don't come back. They're on the job learning and providing for their family. There's nothing better to have a student come back after five or six years to give you their success story. How they went from where they were to where they are now, and I was a part of that. And we're back. Nice drop back. Ooh, nice hit by number four. Jameer Lewis. Second in about 12 for the Trojans. One minute remaining in this half of play. Nice drive back and pass across the middle. Nice catch by number 14, Swahili Irby. Trojans looking to strike before the half ends. Nice read by the quarterback to not hand the ball off as they avoid a near big hit. Second and six. Nice drive back and pass. Nice kiss by number 10, but he'll be brought down immediately. 
15 seconds remaining in this half of play. It's your Southwest Mississippi Community College Bears. It's your Mississippi Delta Community College Trojans by a margin of 15. And we'll be right back at MDCC Sports Network. Graduate of Mississippi Delta. I stayed here four years. I took HVAC and I took industrial electricity slash industrial maintenance. I don't get stuck in a rut. That's why I chose industrial maintenance, heating in there, for the simple reason I I'm not stuck in a building all day. I might be wiring up lights at a customer's house today. I might be working on a well motor tomorrow. Then they might want to go to a factory. Then they might want to go work for a welding company. A student will be able to decide what way he wants to go. If they're serious, they can get a job anywhere. Well, I tell them if they have a willingness to learn, I can show them how to get out and get a good job, and they can make all the money they want to. You know, they get top pay when they graduate. For two years, you can make anywhere from $18, $24 an hour, somewhere in that range. I really like it. We're back at MDCC Sports Network. Drop back. As, he's, as he scans the field, as he throws a dart, but it will be incomplete to number seven, Ja'Kiel Allen. Be fourth down for the Trojans as they trail by 15 with five seconds remaining in this half play. This will be a 34-yard attempt. And it will be no good. And that will end the half, a tough half for both teams. Tough half for both teams. And we would go into halftime, which are Southwest Bears leading 21 to six over the Mississippi Delta Trojans. And we'll be right back with a nice half of football at MDCC Sports Network in a second. See a student learn something. That's very rewarding. Precision agriculture essentially is applying crop production inputs on a site-specific basis to reduce waste, increase profit, and maintain the quality of the environment. It's uh, everything from working on the computer and geographic information systems, how we look at imagery, do prescription maps, to trapping beavers, to, to learning about wild hog control and what the best methods are for that. It's a two-year program, so you can get an associate's degree or you can do it in essentially a year and a half if you want to just get the certificate in precision agriculture. And if you would like to continue on to a university with a four-year degree, there's a great articulation that we have now with Mississippi State University and also Alcorn. What I enjoy about teaching is taking a student who has never been around welding before and by the time we're through with them, they're able to go out and get a job and make a living and provide for themselves and their families. Job prospects look good. If you want to get out there and work, the jobs are there. Your range in which you can go basically depends on your work ethic. My class size started as 12 people, two of which are already at work. They've been working for two weeks now. They don't even come to class. 
They come and take their exam at the end of the year, and they've been getting a paycheck. You can make all the money that you're willing to go out and make. The sky's the limit. MDCC has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. It's the place your journey begins. Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big, plan well, and be anything. My name is Ben Folk. I'm an instructor of music and entertainment industry studies. And today, I'd like to give you an inside look at our entertainment industry studies recording studios here on the Moorhead campus. Let's go. My heart is with the students. We are such a tight-knit group here in Business Office Technology. We just get to know them personally. We get to know them as far as what they want to do with their future to help guide and direct and um, be a part of them. Our students that go the accounting direction will take the same basic core classes that all BOT students take. They also begin to pick up advanced business accounting that the other majors do not. They take payroll accounting, they take income tax accounting, QuickBooks. 
they all will be able to go and be um, like a payroll clerk, an accounts payable receivable clerk. Some of our students want to go on to the university level and they can, and they're prepared to go on and get a, a maybe possibly a bachelor's degree in accounting or even get their CPA. Previous to this, I was actually a math major, but I have my own small business. So I like to use those experiences and share those with my students to hopefully inspire them. So in administrative office, you cover all of the Microsoft Office programs. You'll take Microsoft Word 1 and 2, you'll take Excel 1 and 2, and you'll take Microsoft Access. Also, you take business communications, so you learn how to communicate effectively in the business world, and that's so important. One really great benefit to our students is they get to do an externship. So they actually get to go out and shadow and work for a business. So they get those hands-on experiences. They can start off in any entry-level position as far as a payroll clerk goes, an administrative assistant, even possibly a manager of a business. When I came up, you know, everybody said, go to a four-year college, blah, blah, blah. Really and truly, if I had it to do over again, I would come to a community college and learn a skill. Because skilled labor right now, these guys are the future. They're going to be the ones making the money. We do offer a certificate program, a technical certificate program, and an associate's degree out of this program. So there's three career paths that they could take. A one-year, two-year, or take some academics and do an associate's degree. We do an apprentice program and an on-the-job training program through Wynn Job Center with several of our dealers in our area. And I've got dealerships and private guys just beating the door down needing technicians. So this skill right here is something they can carry on through life, they can make a living at. If you know what you're doing, you can make six figures, no problem. That's a lot of money. I've been on heavy equipment my entire life. Yeah, I was nine years old and my dad told me to dig a ditch about a mile long and left me there for a week and I did it. It's a lot of different pieces of equipment it takes to get the job done. We have backhoes, skid steers, track loaders, bulldozers, motor graders, dump trucks. You need to know all of them and be a master at one or two of them. That way you can fluctuate throughout a construction job site. Construction equipment, it's everywhere. My long-term goal has always been to teach. I had a professor when I was in culinary school that was kind of one of these life-changing guys. Spent a lot of time and effort with me. Uh, my long-term goal was always to give back, to be able to share my knowledge of food uh, with a younger generation. 
In the culinary world, our end game is very simple. We're trying to entertain you and we're trying to fulfill you. Whether it's through the sight of the food, the smell of the food, or the taste of the food, you have to have all three of those aspects together to make a really, really good dish. There's one thing their freshman year that I just beat to death, and it's the six keys to becoming a professional chef. Knowledge, skill, taste, judgment, dedication, and pride. And if a student has those six things and follows through with them, they will be wildly successful. Having a dream and following through with that dream is probably one of the most rewarding things that I can have. We are broad in our area of what we teach. A student can come through and they can go in the mechanical design aspect of it. They can go into the architectural. They can go into the civil and surveying, estimating. I would say this is probably the sixth or fifth year that we've been heavy into the 3D printing. It is a valuable tool and it's the wave of the future. You don't have to have an art background. You don't have to have an engineering background. You want to pursue a four-year degree? We've got different avenues for that also. So my spare time, I'm still drawing at home, uh, designing residential homes and commercial buildings. I love what I do. And when I can teach a student to do and love what I do, it makes my day. It's wide open with electrical technology. We start with basic residential wiring. Uh, we start talking about how ACDC works together. And then we go into motor control for our second semester. Then after the first year, we go into pneumatics and hydraulics. Fourth semester, we go into AutoCAD. We go into PLC, programmable logic control. So anything to do with electrical, we basically cover that. Their career options are unlimited, so you could be just a regular handyman doing residential, putting ceiling fans up, remodels for kitchens, can lights, receptacles, hanging wall-mounted TVs. You could go work with a grain bin system. You could work for a farmer, a grain elevator. Cellular South picks our guys up because they need technicians for the towers. They can make 50, 60 grand starting out. I have students who are hired before they get out of school. Our program deals more with the agronomy side of agriculture and how to grow crops. Also with the agribusiness side. We talk about yield monitors on combines and cotton pickers. We talk about uh, guidance on tractors. We talk about variable rate technologies. We talk a little bit about remote sensing and how we're using the drones out on the farm. We get into dealing with a little bit on livestock. We cover so many weeks for each crop that we grow around here. And I also teach farm machinery and shop management class. With the technological background we've got now in agriculture, there are some good paying jobs out there waiting. And right now, we've got more people calling in with jobs than we've got graduates to fill them. It's very special to me that you can take a seed and plant it in the ground, and you can see a plant grow, and you can see something to harvest from it. MDCC has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. It's the place your journey begins. 
Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big, plan well, and be anything. Love the field of study, love refrigeration. It's what I've done basically since I got out of high school. I came right into this same program in this same shop. Well, with HVAC, there's so many different avenues you can take between refrigeration, ice machines, commercial refrigeration, uh, residential heating and air conditioning, commercial heating and air conditioning, and so on and so forth. There's endless opportunities for these guys. Our goal is to have these sophomores placed at a job where after spring break, they don't come back. They're on the job learning and providing for their family. There's nothing better to have a student come back after five or six years to give you their success story. How they went from where they were to where they are now, and I was a part of that. I am a graduate of Mississippi Delta. I stayed here four years. I took HVAC and I took industrial electricity slash industrial maintenance. I don't get stuck in a rut. That's why I chose industrial maintenance, heating in there, for the simple reason I, I'm not stuck in a building all day. I might be wiring up lights at a customer's house today. I might be working on a well motor tomorrow. Then they might want to go to a factory. Then they might want to go work for a welding company. A student will be able to decide what way he wants to go. If they're serious, they can get a job anywhere. Well, I tell them if they have a willingness to learn, I can show them how to get out and get a good job, and they can make all the money they want to. You know, they get top pay when they graduate. For two years, you can make anywhere from $18, $24 an hour, somewhere in that range. I really like when I see a student learn something. That's very rewarding. Precision agriculture essentially is applying crop production inputs on a site-specific basis to reduce waste, increase profit, and maintain the quality of the environment. It's uh, everything from working on the computer and geographic information systems, how we look at imagery, do prescription maps, to trapping beavers, to, to learning about wild hog control and what the best methods are for that. It's a two-year program, so you can get an associate's degree or you can do it in essentially a year and a half if you want to just get the certificate in precision agriculture. And if you would like to continue on to a university with a four-year degree. And we're back with another half of football. And we have your Southwest Mississippi Community College Bears leading your Mississippi Delta Community College Trojans, 21 to six. Let's see what this half, what this half has to bring for both teams. Nice catch. Nice return. Got a little tripped up by his teammate. He'll be down at 37 yard line where the Bears will take position to start this second half. Marker blocked below the waist by Southwest. And that will start their position at about the 
23 or 24 yard line. First and 10 by the Bears. And there appears to be another marker. Position at about the 17 yard line. First and 10. There'll be a handoff and a nice tackle on the play. Nice tackle on the play by number 45 for the Trojans. Jacoby Franklin, the 6'3", 275-pound sophomore out of Bills, only Mississippi. Second and about six. And that near interception by the Trojans. Nice defense to start off this half by Mississippi Delta. Third and seven. See if the Trojans can get this stop. There'll be a pass. Complete a, to number 17, a number we've heard all night. Tyler Danes. And he will be met. Nice hit on the play by the Trojans. As they, they start this half off with fight. Number 46, Malik Sims. Way to make contact. Legal substitution. Legal substitution. 12 men on the field by the Trojans. This will be first and five from about the 42 yard line. Drop back to make a pass, and the receiver will evade two tackles before eventually bent. Before he was eventually brought down by number 51, Javarius Sherrod. The 6'2, 295 pound sophomore out of Itabena, Mississippi. Another pass by the Bear across the middle. With a nice hit from the safety, number 21, Darion Taylor. First and 10 for the Bears. Hand off to number eight. He'll be eventually brought down. At number 38 and number 46. Mar Pam. And Malik Sims. Second and seven. There'll be a handoff to the outside. A nice hit once again by number 46, Malik Sims. A name we've heard all night. Third and one for the Bears. He will be mid in the hole. But there will be a first down. 
Another set of down for the Bears. First to ten. Near turnover. Before mid by a number of Trojans. Second and nine for the Bears. There'll be another pass. And a near catch, but it almost appeared to hit his helmet. The Bears will be on third down once again. Third and about nine. Try begging another pass, but who'll be short of the first down? And it appears as if the Bears' offensive starters will stay on the field. If they try to convert on fourth and down, on fourth and five. There'll be another pass and catch across the middle. But this will result in another first down for the Bears if they march downfield. Another pass and catch for number 11, to Marco Blanton. Leg on the play, holding the on offense. First down. And the Bears will replay first down. First and about 20. Interception by the Trojans. Number nine, Jordan Johnson. Well, I think that may be brought back. Instead of a turnover, the Bears will keep position and move up five yards. First and 15. This play will be a run by number one. Nice spin and a nice cutback by number one, Jalen Williams, the freshman out of Louisiana. And they'll go back to him and he'll fumble. And he will fumble. Your MDCC Trojans will now regain possession as they trail by 15 with nine minutes and nine, 19 seconds left in this quarter. Let's see if there will be the momentum that the Trojans need. And that fumble was recovered by number 35. 
Randy Mack. Trojans take position. Maybe the quarterback keep, and he fumbled the ball. Trojan keep position. Second and about 14 for the Trojans. But they look to Mars downfield. Try back in the pass. Near one hand kiss by Jaquil Allen. Trojans still looking to put this lead to one position. Third and 14 for the Trojans. Nice pad. Nice run to the outside. And there results in another fourth down by the Trojans. Nice blocking on this play by the Trojans. But they have terrible position, but a, but a decent punt. Which will start the Bears' position at about the 32 yard line. Bears take position at about the 32 yard line with a lead of 21 to 6. Discipline by the Trojans. First down option, fumble, and it was recovered by the Trojans. By number 36, Jabetris Stewart. Nice defense by the Trojans. Let's see if their offense can click this position and cut this game down. as the Trojans will take position at about the 34 yard line. First play run by the quarterback, but he'll be stopped short after about two yards. Both teams with nice defense so far this half. Second and eight. If they hand the ball off, 
and he will be met by number 93 for the Bears. Jalen Price. Third and nine for the Trojans. Nice drop back. Pass nearly intercepted. As the Trojans prepare for their fourth down punt attempt. Special shout out to number 28, Davon Klein, the kicker and punter out of Pass Christian, Mississippi. Near, near block, there'll be a flag on the play which will most likely be a block and a back by the Bears. Both teams still looking to jump on the board this half as the score remains 21-6. Six minutes and 16 seconds remaining this third quarter. First and 10 for the Bears. Nice handoff and a nice run by number 34 for the Bears. Tyler Reed. Second and one. Nice handoff. He will be stopped almost immediately. By number 45, Jacoby Franklin. Third and two, nice drive back. Run and a nice hit. As he likely takes an injury timeout and we'll be right back at NDCC Sports Network. Articulation that we have now with Mississippi State University and also Alcorn. What I enjoy about teaching is taking a student who has never been around welding before, and by the time we're through with them, they're able to go out and get a job and make a living and provide for themselves and their families. Job prospects look good. If you want to get out there and work, the jobs are there. Your range in which you can go basically depends on your work ethic. My class size started as 12 people, two of which are already at work. They've been working for two weeks now. They don't even come to class. They come and take their exam at the end of the year, and they've been getting a paycheck. You can make. We're back at NDCC Sports Network. Drop back in the pass down the sideline. 
which will result in a penalty. New quarterback in the game for the Bears, number six, Quiz Goss, the freshman out of Scott Central. Automatic first down for the Bears. First and 10 from about the 46 yard line. First down, nice handoff. Nice way to keep your feet pumping. But he'll be brought down by a number of Trojans. Second and six. Nice drop back and pass. Might steal for him by number 80 for the Bears. Look, Jerry and Martin, a 6'3 sophomore out of Macomb. Trojan still looking for a little momentum. Nice handoff and a nice run by number 34, Tyler Reed. First team tackle by the Trojans on first down. Near catch by number 80 for the Bears, but nice defense by number 23 for the Trojans. Charles Mallard, the 6'2 freshman out of Hollandale. Third and eight for the Bears. There'll be a timeout on the play, and we'll be right back at NBCC Sports Network. That you're willing to go out and make. The sky's the limit. We're back at MDCC Sports Network, third and eight. There'll be a marker on the play. Penalty on the Bears. Third and eight, which will result. Five yard penalty, so it'll be third and 13 for the Bears as they try to get on the board for the first time this half. Drop back, nice drop it by the quarterback. 
Nice pass to the outside. First down, nice catch by number 34 for the Bears. Tyler Reed. Name we've heard a couple times this half. First to go from about the five. And he will be stuffed. About number 25 and number 42 for the Trojans. Kendrick Boyd and Eddie Liggins. Drop back. Near a sack. The big quarterback almost refused to go down before eventually being brought down by number 22 for the Trojans, Keelan Martin Brown. The sophomore out of Miami, Florida. to go and off to the outside touchdown by the Bears number one Jalen Williams as the Bears extend their lead by 21 points Bears the first team on the board this half Extra point open good by the Bears. 28 to 6 lead with one minute and 41 seconds left in this quarter. Quick shout out to the cheerleaders. Southwest they cheer in the end zone after the score. Let's see if the Trojans can answer and cut this 22-point lead. Pick up. Nice run by number 11. He was brought down by number 25 for the Bears. Jaquan Fry on the return. First and 10 for the Trojans. Nice handoff to number eight. Around the outside. You see, almost refused to her down. And lost the ball. And the Trojans will keep position. Second, about eight. Nice pass to number 17 on the outside. But a nice tackle by number 29, Javier Simmons. First 
10 for the Trojans as they march on the Bears' side of the field. Nice handoff to the outside. But who will be brought down in the backfield by number 38, Latavius Herbert. And that will most likely be it for the third quarter. Southwest leading 28-6 over the NDCC Trojans. And they will take us until another NDCC Sports Network break, and we'll be right back. MDCC has your college experience close to home. A quality education, passionate instructors, and financial support. It's the place your journey begins. Visit msdelta.edu and register today. Dream big. We're back on MDCC Sports Network. as the Trojans still look to strike here. Incompletion for the Trojans and 10 for number 17. Which will result in a punt by the Trojans. Twenty-eight to six, the lead here for the Bears in the fourth quarter. Nearly locked. And the Bears will start position around the 20 yard line. First 10 for the Bears. Nice stop in the backfield almost immediately. By number 48, Jonathan Nicholson. And 
loss of two. Start the Bears second and 12. Pass on second down. We'll, we'll result in an incompletion. Third and 12 for the Bears. Let's see if the Trojans can get a stop. as they look to try to complete a 22-point comeback. Pass to the outside, intended for number two. He caught by number two on the outside, Jeremiah Ratner. They'll move the chains. Drive back pass across the middle, complete to number three, Tavares Henshaw. First and 10 for the Bears at the 40 yard line. Nice run down the foot of the Trojans and the Bears extend their lead. 34 to 6 over the Trojans. Thirty-four to six ball game. Twelve minutes thirty. Twelve minutes thirty-six seconds remaining in this ball game. Thirty-five to six lead for the Bears. Trojan still looking to get on the board. Kick off to the Trojans. Number 11 and the number 17 to return for the Trojans. Number 17 with the return. And he'll be brought down at about the 23 yard line and I think there was a little WWE going on out here. I think it was a body slam. At about the 35 yard line. Legs on the field. Let's see what the refs call. He's getting a little feisty here late in the fourth quarter. Number 36 for Delta. 
Pretty much just play both teams. And they'll be offset. Take a look at this replay. Check out this. Check out this. WWE slam. Troll just take position. About the 24 yard line. Hand off to number 20. But mid immediately by number 43. And friends, Jalen Herbert. Second and 11 for the Trojans. Pass to the outside completed. To number one. Sir Trotter before eventually being pushed out of bounds. Pass incomplete. I don't know if the receivers weren't paying attention. There'll be a flag on the play. Offensive pass and the By the Trojans, number 10. William Ford. Now push the Trojans back to about third and 22. Right back, nice pass and catch. Appears to be a screen. Number 20 to the 40, to the 50, to the 40. Nice run on the play. At right, number 20 for the Trojans. Trayvon Brown, the six foot freshman out of Rolling Fork, Mississippi. The Trojans are not backing down. Nice draw back and pass to number one, Sir Trotter, with a nice kick. In the touchdown for the Trojans. Number one, Sir Trotter. Nice catch and run, young man. Run, young man, run. And I think there's a penalty on the play. It down will be replayed if there were penalties. As the Trojans almost cut the lead a little. Hand off to number 20. Number 75 and number 55 have tempers flaring right now. 
but this is a physical game. Trojan still not backing down. Nice drop back. Nice pack. Which results in an interception by number 25, Amari Jefferson. And he appears to take it all the way home. In your Southwest Mississippi Bears extend the lead once again. Oh, look, there's a marker. Penalties. Penalty play. Eight guys. Extra point, up and good. It's the Trojans trail, but they have not given up. Trojans still have a fight. Forty-two to six lead by the Bears. Nine minutes forty-seven seconds remaining in this ball game. game by both teams. Bears just have a little edge tonight. Number 17 on the return for the Trojans. As he spins out of a tackle, but he'll be brought down a couple yards later. But number 28, Tyler Hills. There appears to be a marker on the field. Be there being all night. Let's see what the Trojans will start their position. This is still discussing the call. Illegal 
Colorado South Block. Receiving team. Coming up towards half the distance to the goal. Be first down. That must force the right. And Phil Tosso, number 36. Be first down. First down for the Trojans. They will start position at about the five yard line. First to 10 for the Trojans. It's handoff near safety, which resulted in a safety. 44 6 lead for the Bears. Should be a safety on the handoff to number 11. Jaquan Fry. Forty-four six lead. And we'll be right back at MDCC Sports Network. Plan well and be anything. My name is Ben Folk. I'm an instructor of music and entertainment industry studies. And today, I'd like to give you an inside look at our entertainment industry studies recording studios here on the Moorhead campus. Let's go. CC Sports Network at the Trojans Trail, 44 to 6. As they punt, they kick after a safety. And that kick led to another touchdown by the Bears. Number one, who name we've heard all night. Jalen Williams. Nice game for the young man. 50 to 6 lead. By Southwest. Time out on the play by MDCC Trojans. And we'll go back to another MDCC Sports Network break. And we'll be right back.
My heart is with the students. We are such a tight-knit group here in Business Office Technology. We just get to know them personally. We get to know them as far as what they want to do with their future to help guide and direct and um, be a part of them. Our students that go the accounting direction will take the same basic core classes that all BOT students take. They also begin to pick up advanced business accounting that the other majors do not. They take payroll accounting, they take income tax accounting, QuickBooks. They all will be able to go and be um, like a payroll clerk, an accounts payable receivable clerk. Some of our students want to go on to the university level and they can, and they're prepared to go on. Number 17, he'll be brought down. Second and seven for the Trojans. Quarterback Keat, he'll be stuffed immediately by number 56. Jeffrey Anderson, the sophomore defensive lineman out of Crosby. Four for ten for the Trojans with a quarterback change. Number four, Mr. Winfield, a 6'4", 205 pound freshman out of Monroe, Louisiana. They appear to be changed teams. Punt team is out three minutes and. 30 seconds left in this half of play the second half as he put it out of bounds. Bears take possession. 
at about the 43 yard line. First of 10, three minutes remaining in this ball game. Nice handoff, and he'll be mid in the middle by number 38, who hasn't given up. Amar Pam, the 6'2", 205 pound linebacker out of Hollandale, Mississippi. For the Bears. Handoff to number 34. Who'll be brought down immediately behind the line by number 34. Dwight Phillips. Third and 13, with about a minute and a half remaining in this ball game as the Bears lead by 45 points. Nice victory on the night. Another rush by number 34. Brought down by number 45, Jacoby Franklin. Forty-five seconds remaining in this ball game. There's Bears away to play call. Time out on the play by the Bears. As they lead by 45 points. And I think there will be ball game as both teams line up at the 50-yard line. And I would like to thank everyone for tuning in to this stream today. And you guys have a nice Thursday. And we'll be back at you again soon with... MDCC Sports Network. Honestly, a bachelor's degree in accounting or even get their CPA.